stationary states. All right, and they're not very physical. Not physical. They're not physical in the sense that not normalizable. And um, the uh, velocity of the um, stationary states equals, again, a half the velocity uh, classical, right? Is that right? Yep. Okay. And so then what did we do? We followed the same procedure that we did before when we did have a nice um, uh, basis set from stationary state solutions and for, that we had for the infinite 1D well that had the numerally infinite basis. Yeah, you think you're going to say something. Okay, so just, you know, try not to look. See if you can do it. Psi general total of x and t is going to equal what? So, okay, so you said an integral. Yeah. So we're going to start off with an integral. Psi general stuff. No, it's a row of or whatever the other symbol of. Phi of k. Phi of k. Where k is what? The wave number. And a wave number is? 2 pi over wavelength. Over wavelength, that's right. Right? So we're going to be integrating over essentially what? The wavelength. The wavelength. The wavelength. But I mean, let's, let's say it right. We're integrating over wave numbers, but it's essentially over wavelengths, right? All right, and then what do we have? So what is this thing going to be? So when we had a discrete summation, we had a probability, Cn, That's times the basis set. This is a probability for a wavelength. Okay, this is a probability. We don't, so now let's be careful. It's not actually a probability for wavelength, because wave number is too high over wavelength. So this is a probability per unit. Okay. K, wave which number. is wave number. All right, and so what are we going to be integrating over? DK. DK. All right, and then what do we all we have to throw in there? D to the pi. K. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, you know when we look at this thing. We, you kind of have to know what things are in general. These are essentially the what? The non-physical stationary state basis set. And these are a probability per unit wave number. All right? And uh, what are we going to integrate from? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, minus infinity to positive infinity. It's okay to integrate that here because what happens, you'll see that we're integrating over k's, and when we're at negative k's, when we, when we integrate over negative k's, you have a negative k in here. When you pull out a negative, you end up with a kx uh, plus omega t, I guess. All right, and what are those? The tra waves travel in the opposite direction. Yeah, those are waves traveling to the left. And when k's go positive, they're the waves traveling to the right. So we're using a complete infinite basis set. And you have waves going both directions. Yes. Yeah. So if you, you know, with math always, I guess math and physics, if you can see the solution and talk about the solution, then you can write this down, all right? Okay. So then generally the problem is to do what? Solve for? Solve for phi. Yeah, you know, solve for phi, the probability density. And what you find out is that, um, and this is the thing that Griffiths does very early on, that if you can solve for these essentially projections at time equals zero, you're all set. They're going to be the same for all of time. And so what you do is you solve these for, plot for um, time equals zero. And uh, here's the only discrepancy is I'm used to putting in a 1 over 2 pi here. OK? OK, but Griffiths puts a 1 over square root here, and then a 1 over square root here. OK? But in the end, because you're going to be throwing this into here, it would be 1 over square root times 1 over square root give you the 1 over 2 pi. Okay. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what is this going to be? That is the integral of psi general times e to the negative i k. Okay. Let's be more specific. Psi general when? Uh, 
t equals zero. T equals zero. So sine general of x and t equals zero times e to the negative i k x. E to the minus i k x. And how can you remember um, you know that it's minus i k x? Because it has to do with the complex conjugate. Yeah, it's it's part of that Fourier's trick. Remember? It's a complex conjugate. Yeah, times. to to multiply if you multiply both sides by e to the minus i k x, you have e to the minus i k x times e to the plus i k x. At t equals zero, this goes away, and e to the minus i k x, e to the pi k x, this would go to one. So that's how you remember that. That's part of the trick, right? That's all it is. And then what am I going to integrate over? Dx. Dx. Uh, you sure? Oh, it would still be dk. What do you think? Not dx. It's dx. All right. I was just trying to make you question yourself. All right. It's over dx. All right. And that's the whole derivation right there. All right. In essence, and even Griffiths mentioned, mentioned this. Is this that much different? than what we did before with the infinite well and the denominably infinite space. I mean, it's essentially the same thing. All right? And what's really nice about these two problems is that in the first problem, you're doing what I call Fourier series expansions. Right? And then, and then over here, you're just doing Fourier integral expansions. OK? All right, so after that, the first thing we did is we did a very simple case. All right. Uh, I guess what I do want to, um, I, I kind of do want to give some names here. Um, let's start calling this the envelope or the envelope. All right. And this is going to be our basis. It's our plane wave basis. OK. And you'll see why that comes into play. Um, it, at the end of this problem. The first problem that Griffiths does is example problem, uh, uh, let's see, what is the number? It's example problem 2.6. In an example problem 2.6, we use this full machinery, and we start off with a problem where we're given at time equals zero, at t equals zero, we're given phi general of x and t equals zero. And, uh, and what it is, it's um, it, it's just this. It's just that the wave function, we know the wave function is between here and here. It's minus a to plus a. All right, so somehow you're able to get this initial condition of a free particle confined into this space right there. All right, and then what we did, um, what we did is all I did is go over that example problem. All right, and what you guys should have done for homework is I did it in class, and maybe I made a mistake or two. All right, but you should have gone over everything that I've done in class and go over the book. All right, but in the end, what happens is, is when you solve for, um, uh, let's see, you end up getting that psi of k, when you do this, and you use this whole technique, you end up with that psi of k, the wave number, the probability per unit wave number, is equal to 1 over the square root of pi, uh, sorry. 1 over the square root of pi a. Okay. equals 1 over the square root of pi a and um, a sine ka, ka over a. And you guys, can, you guys can see here that I am not really adding anything new to this argument. I'm just going over the book. I'm literally following the book. Okay? I have sine ka over k. Yeah. yeah you know, um, Oh, over K, yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, so with this, 
you would plug it back into here, and you would find the sine general of x and t equals, and you take this, and you plug it back into the general equation, and you end up with um, equation 2 dash 104, and it's that if this equals 1 over pi square root of 2a, then you go from minus infinity to plus infinity of sine ka over k e to the i kx minus omega t dk, where omega equals um, h bar k squared over 2m. That's the initial condition we got from when we solved for the stationary states. Okay? So, what Griffiths points out is that, look, this integral is doable, but it's very hard. All right? And probably this integral is best left to do with a, a computer. All right? But you can do it. All right? Um, I want before we talk about some of the some of the things that we can we can get from this result, I want to um, I want to go over Figure 2.8. So Figure 2.8. What you do is if you take this function right here, and then you solve for psi total or what I call it, psi general of x and t squared. What you get is the following. Here's minus a, and then here's plus a. And you get this. This is psi general of x and t equals 0 squared. Is that any surprise? Right? Because that's what you made happen. Right? That's what you set it equal to. The way you solved it is to find these probability densities that would give you um, your initial condition at time equals zero. So it's no surprise that that should happen. Okay? But what is interesting is to look at sine general, maybe I'll do a different color. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's what we're going to be talking about today a lot. Psi general of x and t greater than 0 squared. So Griffith doesn't solve for this. He says a computer did this. Right? Um, you know, by the way, I need an x over here too, right? I need an x comma t. Yeah. Okay? But what he did is he said, okay, then I ran it in a computer and I had a computer do this numerically. All right, and what happens is, is you get the following. You get something like this. Um, you get a bump here, a bump here, and a bump here. And that's that wave function here. For some reason, you said that's supposed to be eight times size squared. In the errata. Say that again, please. In the errata for the book, you said that that should have read eight times size squared. Eight times size squared? Yeah. Square. yeah. Okay, maybe it's, so. He's he's um he's scaling the amplitude. That's it, though. So he's just scaling the amplitude. All right, but one important thing to see here is something that we haven't talked about yet. And what happens to this particle as time goes on? So where where was the particle to begin with? Between negative a and a. It was between negative a and plus a. And then what happens? Where is the particle, or where is the probability density for the particle for time greater than zero? Uh, it starts to get more and more outside. Okay, so it's spreading. All right. So here's what happens: is if you take a particle, a free particle, and you know that it's right here, and then you come back later, what's happened to the particle? Okay. It's, it's wow. probability density is spread out. So you no longer can say it's confined inside of this box. All right? This particle now has spread out over time. All right? And that's a phenomenon called dispersion. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in a little bit more detail. Do you have to keep that continuously measuring the 
Uh, yeah, so that's very interesting. Um, 